In today's video, we will look at anemia and its most important types. So, before proceeding with the video, I request each one of you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for notifications on upcoming videos. I must say here that each like, comment and share you all do on these videos can make a huge difference to this channel. So please keep supporting my work with your likes, comments and shares. Anemia is defined as decreased capacity of the blood to carry oxygen to the body tissues. It's a condition in which the number of red blood cells called the hematocrit or the hemoglobin concentration is lower than normal. The normal hemoglobin concentration in males is 140 grams per liter while in females it's 120 grams per liter. And the normal hematocrit or the red blood cell count for an adult male is 45 to 52 percent and for an adult female it's 37 to 48 percent. Deficiency in hematocrit levels below normal or a deficiency in the hemoglobin levels of the blood can cause anemia. Before proceeding with anemia, let's describe a few points on red blood cells. Red blood cells are biconcave in shape and this biconcave shape can be observed in a cross-sectional view of the cell shown here. What we can see here in this cross-sectional view is that the red blood cells are thinner at the center while thicker at the edges, making it easier for them to squeeze out through a small blood capillary lumen. Red blood cells have a life cycle of 120 days. Within each red blood cell, we have millions and millions of hemoglobin molecules. A single hemoglobin molecule is composed of four peptide chains. Peptide chains differ in different types of hemoglobin. In adult hemoglobin or HbA, which is the major type of hemoglobin in individuals, the peptide chains in them are the 2 alpha and the 2 beta chains. Each of these chains is bound to a heme group. The heme group is further composed of iron and a protoporphyrin ring. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen ions. A deficiency in red blood cell count or either a deficiency or impairment in the hemoglobin molecule can cause anemia. Anemia can be of three main types. These are the hemorrhagic anemia or anemia resulting from blood loss, the hemolytic anemia or anemia resulting from increased red blood cell destruction, and finally anemia resulting from a decrease in red blood cell production or decreased erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis is a process of red blood cell production done with the help of erythropoietin hormone released from the kidneys. Let's describe each one of these types in further detail. Anemia resulting from blood loss or hemorrhagic anemia can be either acute or chronic. The blood loss in acute hemorrhagic anemia exceeds 20% of blood volume loss. This type of anemia results from massive blood loss such as in surgeries or in accidents. Chronic hemorrhagic anemia on the other hand arises from a gradual blood loss from the body. Examples are kidney and bladder tumors, cancers or ulcers of the GIT and heavy menstrual bleeding. All of these situations lead to gradual or chronic loss of blood from the body leading to chronic anemia of hemorrhagic type. The anemia in the hemorrhagic type is normocytic and normochromic. This means the remaining red blood cells have normal color as they have normal hemoglobin molecules in them and are of normal size. Coming now to the hemolytic anemia, hemolytic anemia as the name suggests result from hemolysis where the red blood cells are broken down before they are supposed to do so. The clinical features of all hemolytic anemia are almost the same. These features are pallor, which is the yellow color of the skin, weakness, confusion, dizziness and jaundice. 
Jaundice is caused by the buildup of bilirubin, which is an orange-yellow pigment formed in the liver by the breakdown of hemoglobin. Hemolytic anemia is subdivided into four types of anemia. These are hereditary spherocytosis, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, and glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency anemia or G6PD anemia. Hereditary spherocytosis is an inherited disease where the abnormal cell membrane of red blood cells causes membrane vesicles to shed from the cells into the circulation as they pass through the capillary lumen. With time as the cells shed these vesicles, it becomes spherical in shape and given the name of a spherocyte. What happens is that the cell membrane proteins of red blood cells, specifically the spectrin protein which retain the elasticity of the cells, are mutated to the extent that they lead to the formation of spherocytes. Spherocytes are non-deformable cells that are highly vulnerable to sequestration and destruction within the spleen. In hereditary spherocytosis, the spherical red blood cells can easily stuck within the sinusoidal capillaries of the spleen which are then phagocytized by macrophages of the spleen leading to anemia, sphenomegaly and jaundice. Sphenomegaly is an increase in the size of the spleen as a result of the accumulation of the dead red blood cells into the spleen. Sickle cell anemia is the most common and familial hemolytic anemia in the world. It's an inherited disease in which hemoglobin-forming genes have defected in individuals, specifically the beta-globin genes. Individuals will have two normal alpha-globin chains and two abnormal beta-globin chains. In the abnormal beta-globin chains, the sixth amino acid is exchanged by a hydrophobic amino acid that is valine which normally should be a hydrophilic amino acid, the glutamic acid. The presence of this hydrophobic amino acid in beta-globin chains of hemoglobin molecules makes it sickle hemoglobin or HBS. HBS can carry oxygen really well, but when it deoxygenates by giving its oxygen to the surrounding tissues, it changes shape which makes it stick with other HBS molecules, making linear chains within an RBC and causes distortion of red blood cells, hence results in the sickle appearance of the red blood cells. Since the red blood cells are crescent or sickle-shaped, these sickle-shaped red blood cells are prone to breakage and they usually die within 10 to 20 days, causing hemolytic anemia. The cells, since are sickle-shaped, can also cause blockage of vessels, hence limiting blood supply to various organs of the body. Thalassemia is a group of inherited disorders caused by mutations that decrease the synthesis of alpha or beta globin chains, resulting in hemoglobin deficiency and additional red blood cell changes. Based on the absence of alpha or beta globin chains, thalassemia is divided into alpha and beta thalassemia. Whatever the type is, Individuals will have an excess of the unaffected protein that is in alpha thalassemia, individuals will have mutated alpha chains and an excess of the beta chains. While in beta thalassemia, individuals will have mutated beta chains and an excess of the alpha chains. The excess of these chains in either type will cause impairment or reduction of the hemoglobin molecules in RBCs, making them prone to destruction and eventually causing anemia of hemolytic type. The red blood cells in thalassemia are hypochromic and microcytic, which means, which means that they are pale in color as they have less or abnormal hemoglobin and are smaller in size. The glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency anemia or G6PD deficiency anemia results from mutations in the G6PD gene.
This gene provides instructions for making an enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase or G6PD. The G6PD is involved in the normal processing of carbohydrates. It also protects red blood cells from the effects of potentially harmful molecules called reactive oxygen species or ROS. These reactive oxygen species are byproducts of normal cellular functioning. G6PD prevents buildup of these reactive oxygen species to toxic levels within red blood cells. If mutations in the G6PD gene reduce the amount of G6PD enzyme or alter its structure, this enzyme can no longer play its protective role. As a result, reactive oxygen species accumulate and damage red blood cells. Factors such as infections or certain drugs can increase the levels of reactive oxygen species, causing red blood cells to be destroyed faster than the body can replace them. A reduction in the number of red blood cells causes the signs and symptoms of hemolytic anemia. So these were all about hemolytic or hemolytic anemia. Let's now discuss anemia of diminished erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis is a process of erythrocyte production. Anemia of diminished erythropoiesis is subdivided into four other types of anemia. These are the iron deficiency anemia, which is the most common type, anemia of chronic disease, folic acid deficiency anemia, and vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is the most frequent cause of anemia. Iron, along with the protoporphyrin ring, makes up the heme part of a hemoglobin molecule as we said before. Iron can be taken from diet only. The daily dietary requirement of iron for an adult is between 10 to 20 mg. In the absence of iron, hemoglobin molecules are not developed properly, hence cannot carry out oxygen to the body tissues. Individuals can consume dietary iron from different foods like meat, poultry and vegetables. The dietary iron we take comes in Fe3 plus or ferric form. However, our body can only absorb iron in Fe2 plus or ferrous form. That's why after we take the dietary ferric iron or Fe3 plus, it must be converted into Fe2 plus and this process is done through an enzyme on the apical surface of the enterocytes of the duodenum. This enzyme is called the ferroreductase. The apical surface of the enterocytes is the surface that faces the GIT lumen. After the ferroreductase converts ferric iron into ferrous iron, the ferrous iron is taken into the enterocyte with the help of a transporter called divalent metal transporter 1 or DMT1. Within the enterocyte, ferrous iron can be converted back into ferric iron and stored within cells for later use. The ferrous iron can also be transported out of the enterocyte at its basolateral surface with the help of another transporter called ferroportin. Here, in order to get absorbed within the bloodstream, the ferrous iron must be converted back into the ferric iron. This is done by an enzyme at the basolateral surface of the enterocyte called the hepastine. Since iron is unable to move around by itself, it's transported to the bone marrow with the help of a transporter called the apotransferrin. The transported ferric iron is then used by the bone marrow for erythropoiesis. The four main causes of iron deficiency anemia can be a low dietary intake of iron, impaired absorption of iron, excessive iron loss, and increased iron demand such as in pregnancy or menstruation. Anemia of chronic disease is the most common form of anemia in hospitalized patients. This type of anemia occurs in a variety of disorders associated with sustained inflammations including chronic microbial infections, 
chronic immune disorders and certain neoplasms. Anemia of chronic disease arises from the suppression of erythropoiesis by systemic inflammations. Let's see how. In chronic diseases, the blood levels of hypsidine all of a sudden elevates. Hypsidine is a protein that is made by hepatic cells and is a key regulator of the entry of iron in juice circulation. It binds with the ferroportein, which as said before is an iron transporter at the basolateral surface of enterocytes. This binding of hepsidine with ferroportein blocks the transfer of iron from the duodenal enterocytes to the bloodstream and then into the erythroid precursor cells, hence lowering the production of red blood cells. In chronic inflammations, the hepatic hypsidine synthesis is increased by pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-6. In addition, Chronic inflammations inhibit erythropoietin synthesis by the kidneys. Erythropoietin is a hormone secreted by the kidneys that increases the rate of production of red blood cells within the bone marrow which in chronic inflammations is not done properly. The red blood cells in anemia of chronic disease may be slightly hypochromic and microcytic. Folate deficiency anemia is the next type of anemia of decreased erythropoiesis. Other names for folic acid are folate or vitamin B9. Folic acid has got an important role in the maturation process of red blood cells. They help in the conversion of red blood cells from immature and nucleated erythroblasts to mature non-nucleated erythrocytes. Deficiency in folic acid results in abnormal large number of red blood cells named megaloblasts. Unlike normal RBCs, megaloblasts cannot carry out their functions properly. As humans cannot produce their own folic acids, they must take it from a variety of foods such as beans and legumes. Vitamin B12 deficiency anemia, also called pernicious anemia, results from inadequate levels of vitamin B12, also called cobalamin. Just like folic acid, vitamin B12 or cobalamin also has an important role in red blood cell maturation. Vitamin B12 is taken from food and absorbed into the bloodstream with the help of intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is a protein released from parietal cells of the stomach which unites with the dietary vitamin B12 and finally is taken into the bloodstream through the enterocytes at the iliac part of the intestine. The reason why the intrinsic factor has to unite with vitamin B12 for its absorption is that we have got a receptor for intrinsic factor on enterocytes of ileum but not for vitamin B12 directly. That's why for absorption of vitamin B12, we need it to unite with intrinsic factor first. The clinical features of pernicious anemia are same as in folate deficiency anemia. If you think this video has really helped you, please take few seconds to like and share this video with your friends. Every subscription here you give can make a huge difference to this channel. That's why I request every one of you to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to get latest updates on upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.